Hi, I'm Paul Seal from CodeShare.co.uk. Welcome to this seventh episode in this series where I show you how to build a website with Umbraco V10. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to install Usync. Now, I don't think there are many websites that don't use Usync. Um, so hopefully you've already heard of Usync, but if you're brand new to Umbraco, you probably haven't heard of, of Usync. So I'm going to show you what you do with Usync, how to use it, how to install it, and things like that, and what it's used for. So um, if you go to PSW.codeshare.co.uk. I built this tool for installing packages and Umbraco itself. Um, you probably saw it in the first episode. Um, so what we want to do here is we want to get the code we need for installing Usync. So you can just uh, simply click on Add there and choose Latest Stable because it's working with Umbraco 10. Or if you want to, and because this is back in time and you're working specifically with version 10.1 of Abraco, you might want to choose 10.1 of Usync and you can do that as well. Then you click on install script and you can get that code here. So you can grab this code and that's how you add this package. Um, you can change some of these options so that you don't see all of this. I don't want a starter kit, don't want solution file, I don't have a package name, don't want to use unattended install and then click on install script and it's just simply that so dotnet add package using version that so we're going to copy this and i'm going to go into my com um, terminal and i'm already running it within the clean.site folder so i don't need to tell it the project name so if i cancel that and i just do paste in there dotnet add package using version 10.1 and press enter now you might need to tell it uh, as it was before when we click on this it had the dotnet add and then you tell it the project name it depends what folder you were in um, now if i just press enter on this dotnet add package using version 10.1 and press enter that's going to download it from nuget for me and install it into umbraco my Umbraco project. So that's all done. So now I'll do .NET run. That will load the site again. There we go. So if you have a look in here, it's starting unattended package migration for Usync. So it's detected, Usync code has detected it's not been installed before. It's going to set it all up and uh, it's got the first boot and everything like that ready first migration so it's been added to your project successfully now so if we go into the settings section of Umbraco we'll see a new section in here um, synchronization called usync and what is so good about usync is all of these document types and everything in here and even the content and the media all of this is stored in the database now, when you are working between environments or maybe you're working between different developers, you you want to be able to access the same stuff. You don't necessarily need want to be working with the exact same database. Maybe you want a starting point of that database and things like that. So what this is so good for is that it can just source control virtually everything that is in the database for you. And then you can pull that from source control and apply it. So you can do a fresh, clean install of Umbraco, completely empty Umbraco, and then you can um, grab everything and do it all on here. So what I'll, sh I'll just show you. So let's do a full export of everything. Clean export. Yes, run a clean export. So that's gone through. It's got it's worked out what languages are installed, the dictionary items, data types. It knows there's five templates, all the document types, media, member types, macros, media just everything content all of that is serialized it all and put it into files and let me show you the files on the file system so if we're in the clean dot site folder and we go to usync we now have this it says v9 but i think basically this is for the net core edition of umbraco i don't think there was any reason for him to change the folder name uh, i think it works with v9 and v10 now, if you have a look in here, it's got different folders for content, content types, data types, and all of that. And if you look at, at one of these files, so content types, and then we just edit the article list page, then what it's done is it's got the, it's put it all into XML. So all of these properties and everything, so it knows the name, the icon, the thumbnail, the description, 
And then all of these properties that we added using compositions like content properties, header properties, and things like that, it's it's mapping to those. So if we edit this, we can see all of our content properties there. So the properties that we've added um, on this one is like the body text, telling it it's using the rich text editor, tiny MCE, and the sort order and everything is so good. So we've now got Usync, we've put it all there, and we can then commit that to source control. So I am using source control on this project. So I'm going to commit that in here, and I'm going to add everything. So all of that. So added, installed Usync, and ran clean export for everything so if we do a commit push all that that means that next time someone pulls down this project they will be able to get this sort of up and running so much easier so the next part in this video i'm going to show you i'm going to download this project from github clone it from github into a brand new folder and show you how easy it is to get it up and running so I've created an empty folder and I want to clone my project in there. So I go onto here, click on copied. So that will copy the git clone URL. I open up the terminal for this folder. I do git clone and then paste that in enter. That should pull down all of the code from this tutorial series. And then what I want to do is do CD and then tab, go into there and then CD and then tab and go into clean site. And then I'll just do dot net run. So that should build the site. Remember, I've, all I've done is just clone it down. So I should build it for us. And then it should run the site for us. Okay. So it says Umbraco is not in run mode, install, so you think will not run. So basically, we've got our URL. It's, uh, it knows that we don't have the database set up. There is a connection string, so it knows that it's using SQLite. So all we do is we just put in our administrator, admin at example.com. And then um, you can choose consent for telemetry data. I won't talk about that in this episode. Click on install. So now what this is doing is it's creating the SQLite database for us. Uh, don't show this tour again. Now, remember, we had uh, Usync installed as well. But at the moment, there's no content or anything like that. It's just completely empty. Um, but what we can do is we can, and even the document types have nothing, but we can go into Usync and then we can say import everything. So on the everything part, we can just do import, full import. That's going to pull through everything that was on the code repository. There we go. We've pulled it through and we can just click on content reload and we've got a website. Click on info. How cool is that? So that's the power of Usync. So the source code that goes into GitHub, but the database, if you need to get all the values from the database into source control, that's how you do it. You use Usync. One thing I do want to show you is this um, settings for what is called first boot. So when we did that install there, we went through the install wizard. Um, we can get it to automatically install everything for you um, in terms of the usync content and settings. So you do that by in the app settings, Jason, having this usync um, value with settings and then import on first boot true. So that would import everything on the first boot. But you can also tell it just do the settings so you don't want the content, just the settings. So that's how you do it there with this first boot group. And then you can go even further 
and you can have it with the unattended install um, settings as well. So as well as having that uh, connection string that we already have from the repo, uh, you can have the unattended install settings in there as well. So it not only will it automatically install it, but it'll, you won't even need to go through the wizard as well. So that's worth having a look at. I'll put the link in the uh, notes as well. Hope you liked the video. If you did, please click on like on um, YouTube and uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, please feel free to comment if you've got any questions or ideas on future topics. Um, I'm going to be going through a plan, but um, it's always great if I get comments. It might help me do decide what video to do sooner. Um, and if you did want to say thank you, you could buy me a coffee, uh, but it's not necessary. All the videos are free. And yeah, let's see you in the next episode. Thanks a lot. Bye.